Hello, my beautiful friend. It's Betsy Gutting. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. Let's talk about Pluto moving into Aquarius. This is an epic transit, and I say so because when Pluto changes signs, it's the beginning of a brand new era. Pluto takes 248 years, 248 years to travel all around the zodiac. So this transit of Pluto moving into Aquarius is going to last 21 years and Pluto will not come back to Aquarius during our lifetime. So this really is a time that you may look back on your life and say, that was a big turning point energy for me. That's when my life really shifted. That was when such and such happened that changed my life. And what I love about astrology is we can prepare for these big transits. We can prepare for them. That's what astrology is all about. It's for our empowerment, right? So in this video, I want to share with you what you can expect from Pluto in Aquarius, what Pluto energy is about, Aquarius energy, the themes that we can all expect to be working with. And of course, I will be doing readings for all 12 signs to let you know, based on your rising sign, in which house this transit of Pluto and Aquarius is happening for you. Which area of life will you feel these changes most? I'll also be pulling an oracle card for each of the 12 signs. I love the magic that comes through these cards for each of us. I also want to give you tips for working with this energy. So before you jump to your reading, the 12 sign readings, I highly encourage you to watch the introduction to this video where I want to share with you what I've learned from my own Pluto transits. I had a really hard Pluto transit when Pluto in Capricorn opposed my natal moon. And I want to share with you a few of the key tips that I have for you based on what I learned so that it hopefully will help you go through this time if you have a challenging transit during Pluto and Aquarius. I'm also going to share who will be most affected by Pluto in Aquarius during the first two years of Pluto in Aquarius. Anyway, it's a very long transit. It's 21 years and it's going to begin March 23rd of 2023. So it's coming up March 23rd, 2023, and Pluto will be in Aquarius for just three months from March 23rd to June 11th. We'll get a taste, we'll get a glimpse of Pluto in Aquarius, and then Pluto's going to retrograde back into Capricorn until January 19th. Then Pluto will go back into Aquarius from January 20th to September 1st of 2024. It'll be back in Aquarius and then it's going to go back into Capricorn, 29 degrees of Capricorn from September to November of 2024. So November, around November 19th, Pluto will be in Aquarius for good. So if all those dates have your head spinning, just know that we are going to be entering Pluto and Aquarius starting March 23rd of this year for three months. Okay, so before I get into it, hello and welcome if you're new to me. Hello and welcome back if you've been watching my videos. I so appreciate you. Hello to my Sunday chat people. I love communing with you every Sunday, 9 a.m. Pacific time. Join us if you're watching this at another time. We'd love to have you. I am an intuitive life coach as well as a psychic astrologer. And I love helping you create a vision for your life and bring it into reality. We can do that through an astrology consultation or through coaching. So at the end of this video, I'll tell you more about my astrology consultations as well as my coaching services, what you can expect in terms of results, how you can find out about my testimonials from other clients. I also have a free gift for you and I'll tell you all about your free gift at the end of the video. So be sure and stay tuned for that. So why are Pluto transits so epic? Why do we say when Pluto changes signs, it's the beginning of a new era? Because Pluto is a force of transformation. It is the planet of death and rebirth. Pluto is known as the god of the underworld. It works with us on a very unconscious level, on a deep psychological level. And so Pluto transits can either catalyze a vision for us and take us on onto a whole new passionate path. They can really ignite our passion or they can take us deep down into the murky waters of the muck to cleanse something that really needs cleansing that we had no idea often actually needed to be cleansed. And this is where Pluto's power lies. It's all about power. Pluto wants to 
Help us reclaim our power, to know our true power, to know the truth of who we are and to be able to act from that. Pluto wants us to feel truly authentic in our own skin, authentic and to be able to live completely, wholly, deeply, madly in true alignment with our real, true selves. So you can tell by the way I'm describing Pluto energy, it's a passionate energy and it does move mountains. It does change lives. It does change our world. Case in point, what are we ending as we go toward Pluto and Aquarius? We're ending Pluto in Capricorn. Now we're still in Pluto and Capricorn as I am recording this video, February 17th of 2023. We're still in, we're, at, we're actually at 29 degrees of Capricorn. It's an anoretic degree. What does this mean? It means that it's the last degree. It's where we can experience endings of this Pluto and Capricorn energy. And Pluto and Capricorn, Capricorn's an earth sign. It is structures, it's foundational, it's corporations, governments, control, restrictions. This is what we've all experienced while Pluto has been in Capricorn. We started with the banking crisis, the financial crisis in 2008. We all felt that if you had any money invested anywhere, if you owned a home, even if you didn't take part in those kinds of investments, you still felt it, we all felt it because it affected our economies deeply. Then 2020 happened, Saturn conjuncted Pluto. We watched the world as we know it completely fall apart, completely change. Capricorn is about hierarchies, who's in leadership, who's calling the shots, who has the power. We saw that, we felt that with 2020 and all of the changes, the new rules, the new restrictions. So Pluto and Capricorn has really shifted our lives, a lot of our lives in the areas of finances, money, power at work, possibly your relationships to your boss, to any authority figures that you come into contact with, government, politics, world leaders. We've all felt this. Now we're moving into Aquarius. The last time Pluto was in Aquarius, was 1778, 1778 to 1798. And what's really interesting is that one of the themes of Pluto in Aquarius is revolutions, rebelliousness, freedom, the quest for freedom, the demand for freedom. And in 1788, 1788 is when the US Constitution was ratified. That 20 year period of 1778 to 1798 was a real period of revolutionary impetus in our global history. Where Pluto is most powerful is it brings the unconscious to light, unconscious, unhealthy patterns, addictions, codependent behaviors, toxic relationships. Pluto wants to cleanse us of any unhealthy dependencies, any place where we think we're dependent on another person, a job, a situation, a certain amount of money, a possession even, where we think we're so dependent on that that we need it for our happiness. This is where Pluto can come in and say, let me show you that you actually don't need this situation, person, place, job for your happiness. Let me show you that you are way more powerful than that and that you can co-create another situation that's even better for you if this one isn't good for you. And our egos don't like that at all, right? Our egos don't like it. Our egos are like, no, you're wrong, Pluto. I actually need that thing. I need that person. I need that bank account. I need that certain amount of money. I need whatever it is, that group, that that friendship, that community. If it's truly in alignment with our soul, Pluto will not take it away. But if it's not, Pluto is gonna come in like a wrecking ball and sayonara. So in the big picture, I think of Pluto as the great detoxifier, <laughs> detoxifier. Pluto doesn't want us giving away our energy, right? Pluto doesn't want us leaking out energy or giving to people, for example, that aren't giving back to us, that, you know, where we don't have an equality, where we don't have an equal exchange of energy with another person, for example. Pluto doesn't want us to keep that pattern up. Pluto can also bring up our deepest, darkest fears, our deepest, darkest fears. Again, going back to dependencies, going back. And, you know, this is all unconscious. We've got to remember this is unconscious. So if you're listening to this, you might think, oh, good, Pluto, you know, this has nothing to do with me. I have no dependencies. Maybe there's just a small 
part of us that is leaning on another person or a situation or a possession just a little bit too much. Pluto wants us to awaken to our full power and remind us that it's us who are co-creating our lives. We're doing it and that we have the power to create anything we want. Now, Pluto can also ignite our passion. Pluto can, can bring us alive like no other planet. We, like the Howard Thurman quote of, don't ask what the world needs, ask what brings you alive, because what the world needs is people who have come alive. Aquarian energy is a real contrast to Capricorn energy. How so? Aquarian energy is all about freedom. It's about everybody gets a voice. Everybody gets a vote. There's an egalitarian quality to Aquarian energy. Unlike the earth sign of Capricorn, Aquarius is an air sign, a fixed air sign. So it's about communication thought, ideas. Let's come together, bring all of our ideas to the table and see what we can create. Very different from what does the boss say we should do? What is the boss ordering? What's the new rule or the new restriction that we have to follow at work? Very, very different energy. Pluto in Aquarius wants us to focus on a future vision. It is very future focused. So you, my friend, as Pluto moves into Aquarius, March 23rd of 2023, if you're not already thinking about your future vision, if you don't already feel very focused on the future, you're going to begin to feel this. Our collective energy is going to begin to to show signs of this, where we are all focused on the future. Aquarius wants independence. This is what is so interesting about Aquarian energy is that on the one hand, it's about letting your freak flag fly, being your unique self, independent, authentic. I don't care what anyone thinks I'm doing it my way. I'm going to show you how different I am. I'm going to show you how unique I am. And yet it's about the tribe, the community, humanitarian values, human rights. Let's all come together and work together. Both are true in Aquarian energy. In Pluto and Aquarius, we're gonna see more people breaking free. We're gonna feel more powerful on our own to break free from something. This could be having a breakdown, breakthrough for you in the area of life that this transit is happening for you. This could be where you feel like I am finally breaking out of a pattern, a rut, a way of thinking that has kept me chained to a certain stagnancy for a long time. Pluto wants us to get unstuck, out of stagnancy. Pluto wants us to commune with our higher self, with the cosmic intelligence, the starry universe, and realize our power to create the life we so want to create. It's inventive energy, it's innovative, it's progressive. We're gonna see technology take off even more. We're gonna have brand new technologies that we never would have thought possible. It's going to revolutionize our devices. It's gonna revolutionize anything electronics. It, electronic, it is co-ruled by Uranus. Uranus is the modern ruler of Aquarius and Uranus is way outside of the box. Uranus is like, you know, space travel, it's visionary energy. It's beyond what we can imagine. Life will not be the same after this transit of Pluto and Aquarius. With Pluto and Aquarius, we rise together. Together we rise. No more doing it alone, my friend. We gather together in tribe. We find new tribe. We are ecstatically happy to finally have our soul sisters or our soul brothers. And this could be one soul sister, one soul brother, one soul friend, one soul mate that comes into your life that completely changes your life for the better. Now, who will be most affected in 2023 when Pluto goes into Aquarius, March 23rd? Who will be most affected? Those of you who have planets or points between zero and two degrees, zero and two degrees of the fixed signs, Aquarius, Taurus, Scorpio or Leo, you will feel this transit most intensely, most personally, Pluto wants to transform you from the inside out. Those of you who have planets and points, planets or points between zero and two degrees of the air signs or the fire signs, you will feel more of a harmonious energy from Pluto and more likely Pluto will work with you in a way of increasing your passion connecting you to your truth, being led forward by a vision. I love the quote by Michael Bernard Beckwith. We can either be pushed by pain or pulled by a vision. Those of you who have planets or points between zero and two degrees of the air signs or the 
fire signs will be more pulled by passion, pulled by a vision than pushed by pain. But regardless of how Pluto comes to you, regardless of how Pluto works with your energy, Pluto will leave you transformed, will make you into a brand new person where you feel like you are in a whole new skin. You feel more authentic, more powerful than ever. Remember, Pluto wants to empower you, lift you up, take you to a whole new height. Be the phoenix rising from the ashes, the butterfly emerging from the chrysalis. This is definitely about emerging as a more true self. So before I get into the 12 sign readings, I want to give you a few tips on how you can work with this energy based on my own experience of a difficult Pluto transit. And I am not saying all of you with planets at these degrees are going to have a difficult Pluto transit. Remember, Pluto's going to be transiting for the next 21 years and it moves very, very slowly. It does that. It's a good thing that it moves very slowly because it gives us time to integrate the changes. So I am not here to instill fear by any means. I am here to empower you. And I can tell you, I've had 10 Pluto transits, 10 difficult Pluto transits, and they have shaped me into the person that I am today. I am very grateful for my last Pluto transit, which was Pluto opposing my moon. And it was the hardest one I've ever been through, but it changed me radically for the better. And here's how. Number one, Tip, stand up to any misuse of power. Wherever you feel like there's an imbalance of power in your relationship, this is where you wanna do your very best to rectify that power. Now, I know that's difficult if someone has authority over you. For example, they pay you for your job, or it's a landlord who you know, can have you move out of your place if you're on a month to month lease, for example. I know that sometimes we are in an imbalance of power, but, Pluto reminds us that we always have options. We always have choices. We don't have to stay in that job. We don't have to stay in that home. We may tell ourselves we have to, we may tell ourselves we have no other choice, but this is where Pluto wants us to pull in our power, pull in resources, get support, and realize we always have options and choices. Number two, accept what you cannot change. This is probably the hardest one, is letting go of resistance. When you have a situation where you can't change it, or maybe you don't want to change it, during my Pluto moon transit, I lived in a beautiful apartment in Laguna Beach, just a few blocks from the beach. I didn't want to move. I did not want to move. And yet I had so much noise coming from a neighbor next door. Did I set boundaries with that neighbor? Yes, I did everything I could. I let her know. I made suggestions. I did all of that. The behavior didn't change. I could not change her behavior. I had to accept that. And I had to find ways to take care of me, to take care of my inner child so that I could live there if I was choosing, keyword choosing, choosing to stay there. How could I make the situation as livable as possible for myself. So this is where the serenity prayer comes in, and I'm paraphrasing it, but the serenity prayer, which is God, help me accept the things I cannot change. Give me the courage to change the things that I can and the wisdom to know the difference. Don't resist what's happening that you cannot change. I love the quote, this is a Native American quote. It's been attributed to Werner Erhard, but I think it came from a wise sage way before that. And that is, it's best to ride the horse in the direction that it's going. It's best to ride the horse in the direction that it's going. Resistance only persists, right? Only creates more of the same. Tip number three, discern the situations that are toxic to you, the people that are toxic. Anything that is toxic to your energy, discern when that's true and extricate yourself if you possibly can. Know when that other person, the situation, whatever it is, is not going to change. Realize, have your eyes open, become aware to the fact that many situations, people, relationships are not going to change. So it's up to us to make the changes, right? It's up to us to make the changes rather than to wait, hope that they will make the changes. Set clear boundaries. Absolutely, boundaries are so important during a Pluto transit. All of us will, will be setting clear boundaries during this Pluto and Aquarius transit. But when those boundaries are not honored by somebody else and you've done everything you can, that's when it's time to ask, do I need to remove myself from the situation completely? 
And finally, be your authentic self, but get support from others. Don't try to do it alone and let your future self guide you. What do I mean by future self? We all have a future self. We can all imagine that there is a self, there's a higher self that is guiding us forward. If we can keep our eye on the prize and let that future self guide our choices, our most empowered self guide our choices, it'll be that much easier to navigate these Pluto transits. Okay, my friend, so let's do the 12 sign readings now. Listen for your rising sign, as this is going to tell you the area of life in which your Pluto transit is happening. You might also want to listen to your sun sign because that also fills in a part of the picture for you. Wherever you have Aquarius in your natal astrology chart, and I'm going to get to that when I go through to the 12 signs, this is where you're going to be focusing, where there may be an intense focus for you, where you'll be transforming. You will be, some of you, unraveling an ego self that you no longer need and coming into your own, as we say, into your own skin, bigger, brighter, stronger, clearer, more powerful than ever. So let's start with Aquarius. Hello, beautiful Aquarius. This transit of Pluto and Capricorn is happening in your first house. This is really, really big to have Pluto transiting your first house. This is a complete renewal of self. This is your self image completely shifting and changing. And you might go, what? How is that going to happen? You're going to find out. This is not something to fear, beautiful Aquarius. This is absolutely not something to fear. This is something that is exciting because if you think right now you're in your power, wait till you come out of this transit in 21 years. You are going to be in your power like you never, ever knew it. This is your identity. It's how you see yourself. It's how you want others to see you. It's the roles that you play personal and personally and professionally. It's your appearance and your vitality. So basically, it's an aspect of you. It's going to be for you an ego death. And what I mean by ego death is there is an aspect of you that has maybe been navigating life based on childhood conditioning and you don't need that self anymore. You don't need to protect your heart anymore, for example. You don't need to use certain coping mechanisms perhaps that you've used in the past. Maybe it's time for you to set better boundaries. Maybe it's time for you to see yourself in a whole new light. That is true for sure. That's going to be true for all of you. So you're gonna have a regeneration of self. You're gonna have a whole new self emerge and you're gonna be more authentically you than ever before. So I'm gonna pull an Oracle card for you and we'll see. Beautiful Oracle cards. What do you have to, to share for us, for Aquarians, for this transit of Pluto and Aquarius? Ah, oh, Aquarius, your card is Father Sky, trust in the unknown. Oh my gosh, check it out. This eagle, this sage, look at his eyes, look at his face. Do you see the wisdom there? Aquarius, you are going to grow more wise than ever. What I love about this card is the lightning. Some of you may experience what feels like lightning. You know, Uranus which is co-rulers of, of Aquarius. It's the modern ruler of Aquarius. It's connected to lightning. It's, it's connected to epiphanies, aha moments, sudden occurrences that, that break you free from difficult situations. So trust the process because with Uranus energy, you can't predict it. You can't predict it. What you think is going to happen is probably not going to be the way that it shows up. So, but you are becoming the eagle. You are rising to a whole new level. You're going to fly above your life and have be able to observe yourself from a whole new perspective, Aquarius, and you will be the phoenix rising from the ashes. I love so much that the eagle is in here and that they're, the name of this card is Father Sky. Father Sky. I mean, that says it all. That says it all. You are going to be Becoming the sage, beautiful Aquarius. Becoming the sage. Trust in the unknown. Okay, Capricorns, beautiful Capricorns. You're having this transit of Pluto and Aquarius in your second house. Your second house is income. It's self-love, self-esteem, and your values, your possessions. It's everything that you want and need in order to have a beautiful earthly 
material life. So you, what is going to be transformed for you? Where is your, your focus going to be intensely attuned? That is your second house. That is your income, how you're bringing in money. How do you want to bring in more money? Are you retiring and letting go of a certain kind of income? Um, your values, how you see yourself, you are going to be growing in self esteem during this transit. Aquarius wants to open you up to your beauty, your strengths, your gifts, your talents, for you to see yourself like the spirit of pure love that and light that you are, Capricorn. So let's pull a card for you. Those are the areas of life where you're going to be focused. Okay, so Capricorn, I'm pulling a card for you. Your card is the Protection Guardian. Drop your shields. I love this card so much. So the Protection Guardian, here she is. She has a shield, but notice it's dropped. She doesn't have to put it up high. There's a lot of green in this card, a lot of heart chakra. She has a green gem in her hand. And this card is telling you, you are protected. You have a guardian angel. You have spirit guides. You have many in the spirit realm to that protect you and your own higher self included. And this card is reminding you of that, reminding you to call on your protection guardian, reminding you that you are a spiritual being, that regardless of what happens, and especially if you have money fears, because some of you might think, oh, I'm afraid this is my second house of income. Pluto's coming through. Pluto wants to cause the death and rebirth for me, perhaps, again, if you have planets or points in the fixed signs you, this may scare you and I don't want it to scare you. This card is empowering. This card is saying, no, do you don't have to fear this. You know what I've noticed during Pluto transits, we always get our needs met. We always have resources at our disposal that maybe we didn't expect, especially Pluto and Aquarius rule co-ruled by Uranus. Uranus brings in what we need in any given moment. There's always a workaround with Uranus. So this card is really really emphasizing that, that you are protected and that remember your beautiful heart, that, that emerald green jewel in her, in her hand, signifying your ability to act from the heart. And many of you are healers too. I feel like this is also an acknowledgement of those of you who are healers. If you want to earn money doing healing work, this I feel is a real confirmation of that, a real validation for you as well. Okay, Sagittarius, beautiful Sagittarius. This is happening for you, this transit of Pluto and Aquarius in your third house. Your third house is your local environment, its siblings, its neighbors, it is also communication, it's devices, it's everything that happens in your local arena. It is your thought processes, it is writing, writing a blog, it's journaling, it's all kinds of communication, emails, phone conversations. So this is going to affect your thinking, it's going to affect your communications, it's going to allow you to upgrade your Communications, think the throat chakra, Aquarius is connected to the throat chakra. Many of you are really going to be fine tuning your communication. Some of you might take a course in nonviolent communication. Some of you may be really be working on communication with those in your local environment. Others of you could be healing relationships with siblings. Others of you could have your own patterns mirrored back to you by neighbors or landlords, for example. You could have shifts in your knowledge base. You could have a shift in schooling. If you're in school, if you want to go back to school, you could have a sudden epiphany that you want to get schooling in a specific area. Or if you are in school, you could be having Pluto show you more about yourself through your connection to classmates. These are the areas where you're more likely to have intense experiences, where you're more likely to be given opportunities to transform. So let's pull a card for you, beautiful Sag, and we're going to see what the cards have to say for you. What is your message for your Pluto in Aquarius transit? And your card is the sun. Oh, I love this so much. Well, here's the thing, Sag. Pluto in Aquarius, it's an air sign. It makes a sextile to your Sagittarius energy, and a sextile is harmonious. It's positive energy flow. All sextiles say is make sure you notice the opportunities that are coming to you. 
that light you up, that make you feel passionate and make sure you say yes to anything that feels like it's calling to you, that makes you feel like you're coming alive, like it would bring you more alive. So you got the sun card. How beautiful is this? Enjoy success and happiness. Success and happiness are coming your way, beautiful Sag, through these sextile opportunities that you're going to be getting with Pluto and Aquarius. So be sure and take advantage of anything that comes to you. And if something feels really exciting, but it's scary, that is a sign of yes. I call it exhilarated fear in my book, The Magic of Saying Yes, which is linked below if you want to check it out. Exhilarated fear means that you will grow from this change. And this is what Pluto wants to help us do is grow. Soul growth. Pluto is all about soul growth. So you will have soul growth through anything that is a little bit scary, but a lot exciting to you. Just say yes, beautiful Sag. Okay, Scorpios. Hello, beautiful Scorpio. You are having this transit of Pluto in Aquarius in your fourth house of home. This is home, family, and childhood conditioning. So many of you may have, especially because Aquarius makes a square to your sign, Scorpio, you may find that you have some growth experience, a regenerative opportunity comes to you to heal childhood conditioning, to do some inner child healing, or to heal something that maybe you thought you might never heal, a chance to let go of your past, to heal any of what we call those core wounds of abandonment, betrayal, or shame that often come through childhood wounding as we call it, or past life experiences. So you're going to have that opportunity and it's going to make you into a brand new person. And some of you will have awakening experiences through that. If you have a loss, many of you will have an awakening experience. You will may go through a dark night of the soul, and this is not everyone, but some of you may go through a dark night of the soul with a fourth house transit and come out a whole new person, come out just like the Buddha. <laughs> like I remember when I went through a real dark night of the soul, it was so dark. And a friend of mine said, oh my gosh, you're like the Buddha now. <laughs> and that didn't last forever. I have to say, like after a while, I started to integrate my new self back into my mundane life. But for a while, it was like, wow, I, it was such a deep, deep transit. So let me pull a card for you, Scorpio, and see what the cards have to say for you. And your card is the fire guardian. Ignite your passions. Ignite your passions. So I love this for you, Scorpio, because what this card is saying is, you know, we don't have to go through a dark night of the soul. Sometimes what we want to do instead is just focus on our passions. We can be pulled by a passion or pushed by pain. It's up to us to choose. And when we are very proactive and we really do that inner deep, deep inner soul work, that you know, regular journaling, regular automatic writing. We have a regular spiritual practice. You choose the practice. It could be anything. It's different for everyone. Regular prayer practice, regular breath work, yoga, whatever it is for you. But a practice where we're asking, if you're not clear, what's next for me? What do I want? Ask for it. Ask to be ignited. Ask for your passion to be shown to you. This is what I did when I had left the law when I left my career as a lawyer. I was journaling every day. What is my passion? What is my passion? Spirit, show me. Show me what it is. And I had a dream, nighttime dream. And in that dream, I was doing stand-up comedy. And I said yes to it. I had no idea how to do stand-up comedy. None whatsoever. I write about all this in my book. If you want to check it out, if you want to know the story in detail. But what I'm telling you the story right now, wasn't planning to, because that allowed me to say yes to something that was incredibly scary, and yet I didn't have to go through a dark night of the soul at that time. I didn't have to because I was saying yes to the passion. I was saying yes to what spirit was giving me. So that's another way that we can transform by igniting our passions. So there you go. The fire guardian wants you to light the fire in your belly. Beautiful Scorpio. Okay, Libras. Hello, Libra. You're having this transit of Pluto and Aquarius in your fifth house, your fifth house of passion, passion, it's self-expression, it's children, creativity, our creative expression, fun, play, 
all the different ways we can express ourselves art artistically and otherwise, whatever would light up your inner child. This is where you're going, where Pluto wants to transform you, where Pluto really wants you to wake up, wake up to a new form of self-expression perhaps. Really Pluto takes us down into the depths to awaken us to a new aspect of our soul. There's a whole new aspect of your soul that you have yet to experience, yet to experience beautiful Libra. And so this is very exciting. So especially for those of you who love to create and we're all creators in one form or another, just choosing what we want to wear in the morning is a form of creation. And if you say, oh, I just put on a suit, I don't, you know, I don't really think about what I want to wear. There's another area. Maybe you cook. <laughs> Maybe when you go grocery shopping and you decide what you want to eat. Maybe it's how you, the furnishings you choose for your home, what kind of pillows you buy. There's all different ways that we can, you know, the colors we choose to put on our faces for those of you who wear makeup. It's, there's all kinds of ways that we can be creative. Um, okay, so card pulled, fell down to the ground when I was about to pull one from you and this is your for you this is your card wise one grow within your current situation so check this out libra there is a wise sage here and on her shoulder is an owl there's a crescent moon and there is this very wise black bird and what i feel like this is saying is don't throw the baby out with the bath water there's a situation that you may be fed up with that you may feel like, I don't know whether I should leave this situation or not. I don't know whether I should continue with it. Fifth house is also true love and romance. It's also where we, you know, dating situations. Um, so for some of you, you may feel very stuck in a situation. And this is saying, use your wisdom. Do not throw the baby out with the bath water, especially if you get, see, here's something that can happen during a fifth house Pluto transit. You can fall in love with someone or it feels like you're falling in love with someone and it can feel like a forbidden relationship. It can feel like it's an affair, for example, or it's with somebody who, you know, you know, deep down can't possibly commit to you or wouldn't commit to you when you want a committed relationship. It can really feel like a dangerous relationship emotionally. And so this is saying be really wise with how you use your energy and who you give your energy to and what you say yes to. Creativity is the best way to use this energy rather than thinking that another person might save you or another, you know, running away from a job that's a little bit challenging. Pluto in Aquarius really wants us to dig deep inside before we make outer decision. it want, decisions. It wants us to detoxify from the inside out rather than unless you're in a situation where you know another person is really, really bad for you, or a job is just really hurting your health, or I'm not saying stay in something that's toxic. What I'm saying is don't escape and run away to something else that you think might save your situation. The work is always internal first. Grow within your current situation to the degree that you can, and then you'll know. You'll know when it's time or if it's time to cut the ties to that situation. Okay, Virgos, beautiful Virgo. You're having this transit where you're gonna have intense focus in your sixth house, your sixth house of health, of nutrition, exercise, how you take care of your body. This is the house of well being on all levels. This is your schedule, this is your work, your daily work. Anything you do on a daily basis, any routines. This is where you're having it. So Pluto is wanting to show you and wanting you to look deeply and really uncover anything that's unconsciously driving you or motivating you from the inside out. Any habits that are not good for you, any addictions, any substances, any ways of being that you know are keeping you from being your full, authentic, creative, vital self, your vitality, wherever your vitality is getting, you know, maybe you just don't have good sleep habits. Maybe you're having bad dreams all the time, but you're not like looking into that those dreams and trying to work with them to find out what's really bothering you. It's different for everyone, but Pluto in Aquarius wants you to dive deep and see what's underneath the surface, what you can let go of, what you want to keep so that you have the most vitality 
and you can do the things you truly want to do. So let's pull a card for you and see what the cards have to say. Beautiful Virgos. Your card is the moon. Take note of intuitive messages. Virgo, you are already so intuitive. You guys, I think of Virgos as the healers of the zodiac. Now, many of us are healers, no question, but Virgo is really, you know, it's earth energy. You're practical healers. Virgo is the archetype of the practical healer. You are very, very intuitive. You're very wise. Your body gives you messages. So in addition to your body's messages, your intuitive messages, you know, the moon changes signs every two to three days. And this is saying, follow the moon cycles. Notice how you feel when the moon is full. How do you feel when it's a crescent moon? How do you feel when it's a dark moon, when it's a brand new moon? Notice how you feel and that will begin to show you how some of your emotions are affected by the moon and our emotions always affect our physical health as well. So your intuitive messages have wisdom for you, beautiful Virgo, and by following those moon cycles you can begin to really get clear on your intuitive messages and to really develop a stronger confidence in your psychic ability and your intuitive ability. Okay, Leos, beautiful Leos, you're having this transit of Pluto in Aquarius in your seventh house. This is big, Leo, this is big. Seventh house of partnerships. I just had Pluto and Capricorn go through my seventh house. I know what that's like. It wants you to, to set clear boundaries first and foremost set clear boundaries, get really clear, Leos, on who has your back, who doesn't, who has your best interest at heart, who doesn't, who puts in the time, effort, love, energy for you like you do for them. This is really a time to be very honest with yourself. Pluto brings truths to light. It shows us the truth and it wants to show you the truth about people in your life, both positive and negative. It wants us to be profoundly truthful and honest with ourselves. So this is what you are, what you have ahead of you, and you will not be the same person, I guarantee it, when this Pluto in Aquarius transit is over. So this is where your intense focus is going to be. And when people show you who they are, beautiful Leo, believe them believe them and act accordingly. So now I'm going to pull a card for you. Leo's. Your card is Lord, take charge with authority. Yes, become authority, the authority of your life, Leo. This is such a perfect card. Who is the Lord? Who is the master? It's you. If there are toxic patterns in your relationships if you see a pattern with one or more people or with people that you've had in your life we, you know i i don't really like hearing this myself because it feels kind of harsh to me but this idea that we are the common denominator in all of our relationships we don't have to use that phrase to judge ourselves we don't have to use that phrase to find fault in ourselves we can use it as a light bulb moment we can use it to shine light on what is it that i have done that is making me feel that I don't deserve to have relationships, people, significant others that treat me with beauty, love, that cherish me, those who cherish me. I invite you to decide what do you want to feel? What are the words that describe how you want to feel in your relationships? How do you want to feel? What's your intention? And then keep your focus there. Remember that you're the Lord. You are the authority of your own life. This is going to change your identity. It's going to change your identity in relationships, at work, your leisure time, your creative time, everything you do, it's going to change it all for the better. Beautiful Leo. Okay, Cancers. Hello, Cancer family. This transit is happening for the, and I say Cancer family because I have my rising, my ascendant is in Cancer as well as my moon. So this transit of Pluto in Aquarius is happening in your eighth house, and your eighth house is the house of transformation. It is the house that is Pluto rules the eighth house. This is Pluto's at home in the eighth house. This is the house of death and rebirth. This is also 
connected to our taxes. It's connected to our investments. It's where we share resources with other people, all resources, money, time, and energy. So this is really a relationship and a financial house. It's a house of power. It's where we can experience power struggles. It's where Pluto wants to show us the truth. Just as I was saying just now with Leo energy, that's also seventh house for Leo. It's a relationship house. We have to see the truth of how we are sharing our energy with others. And does it feel healthy? Does it feel good for us? These are the questions that we're going to be asking. And also you may be really delving into an intense focus on your finances and a future plan for your finances. Because remember, Pluto and Aquarius energy is about a future vision. It's about our future vision, our vision for the future and how our finances are supporting us, how our shared resources are supporting us. So, and this is sexuality as well. So you could have some really powerful sexual experiences during this time or some healing in this area. Um, okay, so let's pull a card for you. Beautiful Cancers. Beautiful Cancer, eighth house. Pluto in Aquarius. This is a spiritual warrior transit. This is going to show you what a beautiful spiritual warrior you are. Beautiful Cancer. Okay. And your card is the Medicine Guardian. Be open to healing information. So here is Archangel Raphael showing you that you are a healer and that Archangel Raphael is here for you to heal on all levels, physically, emotionally, spiritually. The eighth house is such a house of wholeness. It's the infinity symbol. It is where we transform from the inside out. So if you have anything with your health on any level, come up mentally, emotionally, physically, spiritually. You can call on Archangel Raphael for healing. And also I feel like this is a confirmation of your own healing abilities. And again, the card says, be open to healing information. So many of you may come into, into a knowing of new health modalities or new healing modalities. And you may even decide to study something that is really going to bring about a transformational healing for you and or for others in your life. Beautiful Cancer. Okay, Geminis. Hi, Gemini family. I have my natal son in Gemini. So this transit for you of Pluto and Capricorn is happening in your ninth house. Now, this is where you're going to have an intense focus. This is where Pluto wants you to detoxify anything that isn't good for you, not healthy for you, that is dragging down your energy, that is not where you can be true to yourself. So for some of you, this will be your belief system. This will be your spiritual belief system, especially systems, especially if you grew up in a religious family and you have any and you felt oppressed or you feel oppressed by any anyone else's values or beliefs. If you feel like that's not mine, that doesn't resonate for me, that doesn't align with me anymore, This during this transit, you will shed any alignment with anything that is no longer true to you. You have full permission to do that. You have full permission to come out as your wild side self that doesn't even have to identify with any specific belief system if you don't want to. This could also be the ninth house is connected to astrology. So then so is Aquarius. So this could be where you really get into astrology, where you become an astrologer, where you study it, where you, you know, or another metaphysical intuitive art. Um, the ninth house is also long distance travel. It's international travel. It's foreign land. So you could move to another country. You could become involved with someone. You could have a passionate relationship with someone from another country. Um, this is where you could do some publishing. This is where you could find a new guru, a new spiritual teacher, and you could have something transformative happen for you in that process. Or you could choose to do some higher education. You could go back and get a master's degree or a PhD or a certification in something that really transforms you as well from the inside out. So I'm going to pull a card for you now. Gemini's and let's see and remember that Aquarius makes a positive harmonious aspect to your Gemini planets so this is beautiful you know wind beneath your wings so to speak this is where you can really soar and you can really 
find a new passion for something or someone in your life. This is really beautiful energy. Okay, so Gemini's. What will Gemini's experience? What wisdom the cards have for Gemini's? And this is Direction Guardian. Choose your path. Choose your path. So you have a lot of guides who want to help you choose your path. This is acknowledging your courage, acknowledging your ability to fly above your life and see with new eyes to detach a little bit. This is abundance. And this is just the angelic realm, the sage guides that you have. But this card is really saying, you know, you're going to have the opportunity. You're going to have the abundance to be able to choose your path, to be able to do what you really want to do. You could have a whole new level of positive power of like personal power, like really coming into a sense of who you are and your power by making a choice. But for those of you who are on the fence, this is a clear message. It's time to choose your path. The world is your oyster. The world is your oyster, Gemini. What would you like to do? You are fully supported to choose your path. Okay, Taurus. Hello, beautiful Taurus. You're having this transit of Pluto and Aquarius in your 10th house. Your 10th house of career, legacy, life purpose, fulfillment, meaning. This is how you want to spend your energy, where you get a sense of I'm on path. I'm doing what I came here to do. I, it's, it's your dharma. For those of you who want to retire, who are ready to retire, it's that as well. But this really is where you feel on track and on purpose. And you're going to, with Pluto coming through here, that could change for you. Your focus could change. You could change careers. You could start a new business. You could leave a job. You could have a huge spiritual awakening and awaken, awaken to your life purpose in a way you never had before. You could go on a whole spiritual quest to find your passion. I talk about that in the, my book, The Magic of Saying Yes what I did when I was searching for my passion. So that may interest you. That might be the perfect timing for you. It is linked in this description box below if you want to check it out. Okay, so this is where you're going to have a transformation. This is where you may awaken to a whole new truth about what your, how you want to spend your time, how you want to make money, how you want, where you want to invest yourself. Beautiful Taurus. So let's pull a card for you and see. Taurus, Pluto, and Aquarius. Your card is the Magic Guardian. Unlock the magic within. Check out this card. The first thing that I noticed about this card, Taurus, was the heart. The heart on this person's chest. The heart on her chest. And all the light, look at the light that has emanated from those angel wings. You are an angel, Taurus. The first thing I want to acknowledge and validate is that you are an earth angel. And it's so important for whatever reason for you to acknowledge that, to acknowledge your light, to acknowledge the people you've helped and want to help. And this is an acknowledgement of your magic, your inner magic, your ability to work with the magical realms, your ability to work with the spiritual realms and bring into reality what you want. For those of you who feel like, I don't know if I can create something that will really light me up. I don't know if I can live my passion. I don't know if I can afford to do my passion, for example. All those things, those ego fears that happen. This is a validation that yes, you can. But you have to tune in and awaken to your own magic. And this is what this transit is going to do. It's going to awaken you to the magic of your true self, of your spiritual self. It's going to show you who you are at a deeper level than you probably ever experienced before. That's what Pluto does. It transforms us. You will become like this magic guardian. Unlock the magic within beautiful Taurus. I love this card so much. You might want to do a meditation on your heart. Remember that our hearts attract to us 5,000 times greater. The, the magnetic field of the heart is 5,000 times greater, according to the Heart Math Institute, than our intellect, than our mind. So stay out of your head, get into your body, do some meditations, let your heart lead you to the perfect thing. Beautiful Taurus. Okay, Aries. Hello, Aries. You guys are having this transit of Pluto and Aquarius in your 11th house, your 11th house, which is the world. That is the world card in the tarot deck. And it is the house 
of Aquarius. So this is an Aquarian transit in the 11th house that is ruled by Aquarius. So that is like double the energy, which is so beautiful. You're going to be transforming your friendships, your communities, who you spend time with in groups, social media. You might have a new social media platform. You might do social media completely differently. You may say for a while, I'm not doing social media at all. I've had it with social media. I just want to meet people in person. You may decide to do some online dating or stop online dating. There could be all kinds of changes that happen for you in these areas. But what this want this transit wants you to do is open up to find your tribe, find your like-minded tribe and let go of any friendships that are no longer in alignment with you or transform them if you possibly can. So everything that I shared as tips earlier in this video before I went into the 12 signs, I highly encourage you to watch that part of the video if you haven't yet. Those will really help you with an 11th house transit because this really is about your relationships but it's also long-term gains, it's hopes, wishes, and dreams. So you may change what you would call your dream or your vision. You may change that during this transit. You could become less ambitious or more ambitious as you would define ambition or success. That may completely change for you during this transit. We shall see, beautiful Aries, but this is going to change most likely, at least at the very least, the people that you keep company with. And maybe if you're part of a cause or you're a social activist or you're involved in politics, those arenas will change for you in some way. You might pick up a new cause. You may let go of a church that you've been attending. You may say yes to a new church or a new community group, or you may you know, decide to do yoga instead of go to church. There are all different ways that this could, or you, you join, a, you start listening to an online podcast that instead of something else that you did before. But this is where we get our fellowship, our fellowship in new and different ways that will transform you. So let me pull a card for you, Aries, and see what the cards have to say. Aries, 11th house transit. Star ancestor, follow the voice of your soul. Yes, stay, stay true to you. This reminds me of a client that I worked with for some time that was very devoted to a specific group and felt very, it was very, very hard for her to leave that group. She felt guilty. She felt like, no, like I'm giving a lot. I'm like, this is where she was doing all of her volunteer work and spending a lot of her time. And she realized they're no longer, their belief systems were no longer in alignment with hers. So this card is saying, instead of identifying with a specific group, identify with the galaxies. Identify with your star beingness. Remember where you came from. Remember who you are. Change, shift your identity in this way so that you don't feel like you're indebted to anyone. You're indebted to any specific group and you can release any guilt or any, you know, fear of leaving anyone behind or even fear of someone else, quote unquote, leaving you behind. You know, we grow and change in different ways. And that means our relationships, our attachments, our connections, our sense of belonging changes as well. So your identity may very well shift during this transit, beautiful Aries, but remember who you are, where you came from. You are connected to the galaxy. You are a star ancestor. Beautiful card. Okay, Pisces. Hello, Pisces. You're having this transit of Pluto and Aquarius in your 12th house. Wow, what a deep, deep transit you're gonna have. The 12th house, you're gonna come out of this completely transformed, completely transformed from the inside out. The 12th house is where we have, we go to retreat. It's where we swim in those deep waters and connect to the divine. It's our connection to the mystic, our mystical self. It's where we heal our subconscious minds. And this is why I say, you will probably have a deep healing, maybe a spiritual awakening. You could go through a dark night. I'm not saying that you will. It's possible that you could. But what is, what is most likely true for you is that 
The universe spirit, this transit of Pluto and Aquarius wants you to rewire your subconscious mind. It's supporting you to rewire your subconscious mind to release any limiting stories or beliefs that just are not true about you anymore. And you're going to come out of this so feeling so incredibly empowered and like you can take on the world or at least you can take on the thing that your heart most desires. So beautiful Pisces, let me see if there's anything else that I wanted to say to you. Great time to do shadow work, very fruitful, um, and time to really commune with your inner child and do some deep diving kind of soul journey work. And if you want to do that with a facilitator, you want someone to help you with that, I can certainly help you with that. I would love to. And also I have a number of guided meditations on my YouTube channel that you could do as well. So let me pull a card for Pisces, 12th house, Pluto and Aquarius transit. <sighs> Pisces, your card is the elder, move beyond ancestral patterns. Okay, ancestral healing, 12th house. Absolutely, absolutely. Some of you are gonna be doing some ancestral healing and you're gonna be able to cut the cords and the ties to possibly eons of ancestral patterns that you're that have been carried down through your ancestral line. If this card resonates for you, you are doing important work, Pisces, very important work. I really want you to see this as you are being the leader of your family and you are saying yes to something that is going to help generations and generations of family members to come as well as those that came before you. You are a healer, Pisces. You are the archetypal elder. You can make a huge difference in your family by healing these ancestral patterns. And I can help you with that as well. And there are also videos on YouTube about healing your ancestral line. So you might want to search for those as well. But this is exciting, beautiful work that you can do during your 12th house Pluto and Aquarius transit. Okay, my beautiful friend, I hope this video has been helpful for you. If it has, give it a thumbs up, give it a like, leave me a comment, let me know what resonated for you. I love your comments so much. I am so grateful for them. Thank you for your shares of this video that can help other people as well who love astrology. Thank you for your subscribes. When you subscribe, you get notified of my videos, especially if you tap the notification bell. You also really support my channel. So we both win, we both get something good out of it. Thank you to all of you who have subscribed up until now. I'm so grateful for you. Thank you to my Sunday chat people for joining me. And if you would like a personal astrology consultation, I would love to do that with you. You can choose to do a natal chart reading, a heart's desire reading, or a life purpose reading. For all readings, we go over the current transits. What, how are the planets currently affecting you and how can you use them to your best advantage? How can you feel empowered by what you're going through, whether it's difficult, challenging, or easy and harmonious. Also the future transits that are coming up in 2023. We look at those as well. I share with you what you have to look forward to. When are difficult transits, if you're having them, going to be ending? And what? how can you work with the upcoming transits so that you can say yes to whatever is calling to your heart and leave the rest behind? Go to my website, Check out my testimonials, see what results other people have gotten, get some information on the readings, and I look forward to connecting with you over Zoom. We can also do a clarity session. If you would like clarity on something in your life, you can, or you can look into my Soul Alchemy Coaching. So check out my coaching page where I tell you all about that. And I have a free gift for you, my friend. I want to support you with a free guided meditation. It is a soothing guided meditation to reconnect to your spirit, to reconvene with your soul and receive that inner guidance that can bring some relief and some calm. If you're feeling stuck right now, just go to my website, sign up for my inspirational updates. And when you sign up for my inspirational updates, my weekly astrology updates, then you will be able to get an instant download of my guided meditation directly downloaded to your device 
device. And some of you have asked how you can donate to my channel. Thank you so much for that. I have a PayPal link in the description box below. If you want to buy me a Mexican mocha, I would love that so much. Of course, I accept and I'm grateful for donations in any amount. You help keep this channel alive. And thank you to those of you who have donated thus far. So until my next video, my friend, I am sending you all my love. I will see you back here very soon.